high strength bar composite films of PVA. PVA is kind of bar polymer and yesterday we saw fly ash in polypropylene all the modules and things also and including the fact that there was a question asked how did the impact go. So, there is a figure which shows how the impact properties, the salinity and other properties will show that later. Now, today we are going to this biopolymer type PVA polyvinyl alcohol and the idea of PVA I am grateful to Professor Ajit Kumar Bantia of IIT Kharagpur is a very, very well known polymer scientist. So, when I had been on an on about three months program in IIT Kharagpur several years ago, then he was working on that PBE, he is students. And one of his students, he later became Dr. Arfat Anis. So, he sent him to my school and at that time there were some programs. So, he came and came for three three months. When he came for three months, he had brought with him some PVA for his for his work. So when his work was completed, then I introduced my PhD scholar, Dr. Dilip Devna, to Rafat, Dr. Rafat Anis. At that time, he was Mr. Vajan, Dr. Rafat Anis. So then we took some of the samples from him. PBA and then this is an extra, extra chapter in the Lipnas thesis. Because it is always good to see how it can improve the polymers and applications for different, different purposes. PP? Okay, it can be a binder, but it can. It also sometimes need, needs to have another binder. We'll see that later. Okay. Now, before we go, because it's holy, I'll just sing my first couple of songs of that holy, and then when other people come, we'll sing the full song. Madhuban me, shema bihari kele hori. Gopiyo ke bich, Sri Radhika sang, Lila kare, Sri Hari. Madhuban me, Shema Vihari khele hori. We will get back to the later part, okay? All right, thank you. Later. Now, this is on the left hand side. This is Dr. Dilip Devna, and he was very, he was very adamant, having more and more journal papers, and I supported him. But that means I also had to give much more time and go through that. But it's well, eventually, I think, from his this his PhD thesis. I think 10 journal papers plus one or two more conference papers were published. And then this publisher from Germany, Lambert Academic Publishing, they were very interested. They saw this and they, they contacted us. And then we said, yes, we have, can you please send us the soft copy of the thesis? So it was after he was given his PhD degree. We send that, and they published this book, this commercial book. In and this is the cover of the. This is the front page. This is the back page, and this is the, you know, the. So I thought that was something worth mentioning. So, and it has a. This is the ISBN number of the book. So, I had sent this information to Professor Kaur before I came. So, that was something which, so when he was so keen to do that, 
I I also took I said yes, please go ahead. But before that he had to he has published his journal papers and things like that and I had to go through with him. All right. If you go to the Now, this is something some publisher, Austin Journal of Polymer Science and Engineering, he also actually, they, they also sent a letter to Devnath, but they sent an email to me and they were very happy with the high strength biocomposite films of polyvinyl alcohol reinforced with chemically modified fly ash. So, that was a paper published in Journal of Material Science. So, they kept on asking, please submit your publications to us. So, I thought that's a <coughs> accomplishment. That's a credit goes to the PhD scholar. All right. Because the PhD scholars, they do most of the work. And it's my responsibility to be with them all the time. So, sometimes I work till 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Then I have to get up at 8 o'clock and rush to the university. But that's wonderful. So, they asked ask questions and things. So, and let me put some of this. Which plus, which have been the most popular plastics for making plastic polymer composites? The answer is polypropylene, polyester and an epoxy. This is something which came up in, in one of the lectures in the first day and one of you actually also mentioned polyester and epoxy. And the research on recycling and reuse of fly ash as filler in green and eco-friendly products and engineering composites have been considered over the past two decades. And matrices considered include metal and polymer. Now, yesterday I was, I was speaking with one professor is from IIT Chennai. He came for the dinner and as soon as he saw me, he said, Dr. Brando, I know you. And I said, where did I meet you? He said, you came to IIT Madras and he's, he, he used to work with Professor Malhotra, S.P. Malhotra. And that was very nice. And then he said, not only that, when I had about 50 of my songs on mp3.com.au for over 10 years. He said, I used to listen to your, all your songs on the mp3.com.au. I said, thank you very much. But then we went to this thing and he said, he is interested in using fly ash and metals. Can it be done? But he wants to do it. I said, yes, of course. And then one thing he said, but flyers can make the metal heavier. But then I, I said, well, if we're using aluminum, aluminum has density of 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. And remember, in our lectures we have said flyers density can vary between 2.3 to about 3. So I mentioned, and then that made him happy. And then he said, but if we melt it, and if the flyers is as lower density, then it will float up and it will go. I said, that's one way to think about it. But if you quench the metal very quickly, then that may not happen. And also, if you use powder medley, your sintering methods. But, so he thought I would do it, but it's not so much, he was not so much uh, conversant with this powder metallurgy sintering method and but it showed that he is interested and in, so he wants to, I, I think his name is once, but if you ask, but he's here in IIT Kanpur, so if you check with uh, Professor Kamalkar, so you can do that. So that shows it can be done. And then I politely mentioned to him in about 10, 15 years ago, I spent a lot of time on making metal matrix composites 
using aluminium but all different things so these things can be done so when you are putting something putting one phase into another the density sometimes can make a difference but if you can have the thing and if you can prevent the flies to keep on moving in the case of epoxy and polyester if you are if they are thermosets then they cure quite within a certain time half an hour 40 minutes if you put the fly ash around the time when it's close to final curing then fly ash cannot move all right so these are the aspects but when he asked that question can you use it metal matrix composites so i was very happy and then so i thought i'll pass on that information to you also okay he was in this professor was in iit chen is it called iit chennai or iit madras iit madras okay huh okay that's a very nice thing i was thinking of mentioning but i thought it i'll go into too much into it but you have one interested researcher asking can magnesium also be used yes this is very magnesium has a density of 1.7 gram per cc it has got good strength also so when i when i used to work in isro in fact dr kalam's team wanted to they used to make lot of satellites structures they wanted to know if there is some metal which is lighter than aluminum but which can also have the good properties and at that time i being first <coughs> metallurgist i started working on magnesium and that made dr kalam interested okay but there was no magnesium melting facilities and things so it took about a year's time to set up the magnesium lab but then afterwards after i left uh isro then my one colleague dr mittal mk mittal yeah, he continued doing that and he expanded and so to answer your question is yes, magnesium but in the case of magnesium fl- flyers will be a bit heavier so in while the, the professor said that if you are using uh, this flyer will it go up is it lighter in case of magnesium it might come down so the best thing is to have a very good mixing and if possible some curing all right also there is another alloy which is very popular in aerospace and that is titanium 6 aluminum 4 vanadium and that i came to know from the head of my department mqc materials and quality control at isro there dr mk mukaji and then he made me work on titanium 6 aluminum 4 vanadium so that was again being a metallurgist i i made myself familiar with the phase structure so there are plenty of ways things can be used but then because the densities are different you have to but this thing like when a scholar comes to a, to do masters and phd the scholar has a lower density and the professor always has a high density all right so you have to do mixing between the lower density and high density so that's part of life all right sometimes you can work much more than the professor then the professor's density comes down or if the professor works much more than you then professor's density goes up but that's something which always interesting composites are like that and my suggestion is never take no for an answer there is always a possibility all right okay because metal matrix metal was mentioned there so that's what when this professor mentioned yesterday so i thought that yeah that's a nice way of going to go now polypropylene can come from petroleum based systems although it it can make a very popular thermoplastic with moderately high strength the polypropylene flash composites they are a bit poor in tension you remember we saw saw the graph is that the tensile strength was coming down modulus and everything was going up all right but tensile strength was coming down 
the dramatic loss in tensile strength can happen if you are using too much of fly ash in polypropylene. So, sometimes people might think of how to modify that. So, this and also when you are writing paper or doing a research, you have to find out the strength of your research program. So, sometimes you have to find out what is the possible inconvenience of, the, so of other systems. So, you have to say my material is much better. I do not sometimes always like that, but that is how life is. Okay, So, everyone wants to be, when you are in a class, people can be very students are can all be very good, but some students go to first, some students go to second, some students go to third and that is how the school wants them to be. But being from India, when I used to teach at the least last few years, three, four years I stopped teaching, but I consider I considered on research. I never took that view. I used to say that everyone has to be improved as a as a teacher or lecturer, everyone. So, I did not give the same assignment to everyone. Rather, what I used to do, I used to say if there are 50 students, I used to give 50 different assignments to each one of them. And how I used to do that? I used to ask the students, what do you prefer? So, so that means they had to spend their time also. But that way, we are, I was a bond with them because every every student had to write suggested topics. So that means he or she has to do some study there. And then, even for me, if I'm not familiar with all of them, I had to also go and do some study. So that way, I believe it is, as a as an academic, and many of you will become academics in the future. It's our responsibility to make sure every student improves. Never say that student is much more meritorious than the other student. No, everyone is our job and responsibility to improve everyone. All right? So, sometimes that means meant that in my undergraduate courses hardly anyone failed because I gave lots of assignments and things because sometimes students in the exams, sometimes they do not, it is not easy for them to answer exams. So, I used to put 50 percent marks for exams, rather 50 percent for assignments and on all these things. And that is, that is allowed in our university, once you do that within the, within the course. So, that is how things went down. So, everything has good and better and sometimes less popular aspects than others. Now, Dr. Dilip Nath, he, he did his PhD in Japan and he thought himself to be a very high class researcher and I agreed with him. I said, yes, now that you have come up with him. But then I said, you think yourself high class researcher, but you do not go any beyond that. But if you keep on doing it, you'll be, your work will be appreciated and that is what happens. So, when Dr. Uh, Banthia student, Arfa, Mr. Arfatan is he went there and then we took some PBA from, from Arfatan uh, is and we started using polyphenol alcohol. So, this polymer has been used in the formation of low cost environmentally compatible composites with sugar cane, starch, clay, carbon nanotube. So, PPA has been already used in other products. So, if you go down here, the objective of this study is to develop high strength biodegradable PPA polymer composite films with fly ash, which will be a potential candidate in the ever areas. This fly ash samples were obtained from the cement Australia Queensland branches. You have already seen that. Dr. Arthur, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Jenny, 
whose work I presented yesterday in polypropylene, he used the same fly ash. And Dr. Dilip Devnath, he used same, same, fly, same fly ash in this work also. So, he selected one fly ash, it is a class F fly ash. What is class F? Low calcium. All right? Okay. Thank you. Now, as soon as you go for a polymer PVA, you have to know what is the molecular weight. And its average molecular weight is 125,000. That's a molecular weight average of average chains. So you have so many chains, you know how many there. So they, they were way of doing it. And degree of hydrolysis is approximately 89 percent. Was purchased from Fine Chemical Limited, Chennai, India. So this is the material we didn't purchase, but Arfatanis took this material with him and he actually he worked there and also just if I can mention one thing, we use this PVA also in another project. I had a uh, professor who came from University of New, New Mexico in America and Arfatanis was also there. So we also use PVA and carbon nanotube. And we had a journal paper and that was the first time this PVA and carbon nanotube composites were made. So that, that is also published, all right. But because this carbon nanotube is not the part of this course much, so I will not spend much time there. But what is the difference between carbon nanotube and fly ash? Just comment commercially. Cost of carbon nanotube is very high. Yes, so if you can, if you can use 20 percent fly ash, is very cheap. But if you want to use 20 percent carbon nanotube, yes, too 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 expensive. Now, another advantage of carbon nanotube is that often, even if you use like 0.3 to 0.5 percent, that is my some other work in carbon nanotube. If you use 0.3 to 0.5 percent, which means le less than 1 percent, it can give you very high property that you can get using other, other fillers like 10, 15, 20, something like that. So, both of them, everything has positive and less positive aspects, all right. Now, one of you said polyvinyl alcohol, does it settle properly or it absorbs much more moisture? I think you mentioned that, yes. But then there is also a way to avoid that. So, pretty absorbs and that is by curing GLA, gl glutaraldehyde. This is actually a thing which you put in there, it is kind of a curing agent. Now, PVA is not a thermal setting plastic, so you cannot say that it is a curing, but it actually makes it much harder and especially if you put P this GLA glutaraldehyde, it reduces the hydrolysis aspect of the thing. So, that, that means it makes the polymer much more improved. Okay? So, it, it makes the polymer like close to something like a thermoset plastics. All right. And PVA is also considered as a biopolymer and used in different areas. And in doing, when they live, they have not used these things. So, I had suggested him please go and staff or scientists in the, in our Mark Wendert Analytical Center. They have all different kinds of equipment which we do have endometrial science and engineering. So, he went there and he spent time with them and they went, wrote the papers. I said, who are the people we have? They please include their names. So, two or three people, all right. So, that made it quite confident to us. Now, preparation of modified fly ash. So, these 
as I said in the earlier part, he said this flyer was surface modified because, as we discussed yesterday, flyers is a different material from PVA. So if you can surface modify it, if you can put a polymeric surface in it, then there will be much better bonding between the flyers and the PVA. All right, like like we said yesterday. So that thing, surface modified flyers. So two molar sodium hydroxide deionized water solution were prepared, and after cooling down the solution, 100 milliliter was taken in to naked down bottom. Anyway, this is how all these things are done. The details are given there. So you have this deionized water, including sodium hydroxide. So that thing actually modified the surface of the fly ash. It, it was heated under vigorous stirring, and the cool suspension was filtered and they washed several times with deionized water. Now, for commercial application, huge applications, sometimes it's, it will be expensive, but this polymer is also used for bio, bio application. For those bio applications, if you have to do give more and more treatment, it's still acceptable because bio materials you can sell for better price. So this shows how the modified fly ash you actually dry it under vacuum, the high concentration and high ratio of flash use like that. So ratio of fly ash to sodium hydroxide is one divided by one point two were reported for. So, these things are standard information in the internet or in the publication. So, what we did was a good idea. So, having the so PVA and PVA is modified by glutaraldehyde and then you put fly ash, modified fly ash. The neat PV was dissolved in deionized water, and then the fly ash modified class particles with up to 25 concentrations were dispersed and sonicated for fiber. What is sonicated? Vibration. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. So, what does it do? Like going back to the Question the professor asked me yesterday: Will will the fly ash particle go up or come down? So if you do this kind of thing, and also if you glutaral dehyde, so it, it starts curing the PVA. So if you keep on sonicating, it will not either go down or it will, so the distribution will be all right till the system is all right. So sonication has that advantage. So, this is how things are done. The resulting solution was casted. Now, grammar sometimes is a cast, 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 but sometimes they use casted. So, the English, I am not worried about it. And in glass petri dishes, and the bubbles were removed by shaking. So, these are thin film, films. Actually, basically, this chapter shows they are making thin films. Now, you remember on the day one or day two, Professor Kamalka showed that the, his team, they make plastics for biomedical applications. And often those plastics have much thin, thinner aspects than commercial applications. Where? I have to find it out. Shall we go back to the slides? It, does it say? I'm not a chemist, so I have to learn from you. All right. Will the answer be here? The suspension was heated 
okay two molar the solution was prepared after cooling the, down the solution 100 milliliter was taken into to naked round bottom flask with attached condenser and placed in oil bath under magnetic starter following so that is it answers your questions okay part 1 the suspension was heated under vigorous stirring at 85 degrees c for 8 hours the cooled suspension was filtered and washed several times with deionized water and finally MFA was dried under vacuum for two days at 50 degrees C. So, these are the references which people have done before. The higher concentrations of sodium hydroxide and ratio of fly ash with that were reported for act activation of fly ash. So, these are the techniques which has he used. And for fabrication of the composite films, the composite films were fabricated by casting method from aqua solutions of PVA and so this is the you are actually mixing the aqueous solutions of both the PVA and the other things. So, you are not you are not using the flash particles or things like that, but they are already in aqueous solution, they are dispersed in aqueous solution. So, then when you have these two aqueous solutions, then they get mixture and then if you can dry it up and things like that, so the water dis disappears, but the particles they start mixing. Okay? So, these different weight percentages were made the, for the preparation of the composite films 1 NHCl and 1 weight percent GLA solution. This is glutaraldehyde in the ionized water they added sequentially to this PVA FA and PVA. So, one type of composite did not have modified fly ash, the other one has the modified fly ash. You have two different types of composites. Now, I have been asked several times if I can give you these slides. So, I have no objection, I am quite happy, but because this is part of the Gian lecture, so I am giving these slides and I think Gian puts them up on the website or otherwise. So, please check with Professor Kamalkar, he is the coordinator. And once I give this, in a way, actually, Gien and Gien also goes back to the Ministry of MHRD or something like that in India. So they they will say we own the rights of all these things. Okay. So from my point of view, I'm quite happy. So I can I will let Professor Kamalkar know. But please check with him because sometimes. I am told that these are put on the website, the things like that people can access it. All right? Okay. So it is okay with me, but I may not have the authority to of giving it to you because Gian will say that now they possess the authority. So when Professor Kamalkar comes here, ask him how you can get this. All right? Because all this, all these things are on the web on, on, on this computer. That is why I believe the rooms are always kept locked. Sorry? What is audio, audio visual? That means the voice films. So, that's now that's what whatever Gian will do. All right, even I will not have the authority to just change it. But we'll be happy if this gets known and the flyers. So let your friends also go through that. Let your head of schools and directors go through that. Then you will have more. It's always important to involve the directors of the and the things. When I was a visiting academic in J, I was trying to promote nano composites to the professor who invited me, Professor H. Boyder. And then he said one day, he says, Dr. Bondobas, I made an appointment with our vice chancellor with you. And then I went there, and what happened, fortunately, the Indian Express and Times of India in Ahmedabad, 
they had published two articles on me going there and promoting nanotechnology, which I had done. So, remember, I, I did say, I think yesterday or the day before, with Vishwakam Engineering College, LDRP, and they had, they had published these articles. Now, when they published these articles, they highlighted nanotechnology and everything, but they also highlighted that Sachin Tendulkar's song. So they said, this is a nano, nanotechnology that comes from India, but he is also a fan of Sachin Tendulkar. So, so Sachin Tendulkar's name was very useful in promoting nanotechnology. Okay, because Sachin Tendulkar's name was there, the first two lines, Ida Deka, Uda Deka, so they thought it will attract the general public. They used that there, and they also then put all the other things. So I was very happy with that, because whatever you do, the knowledge has to go through the media and also other. So then when I went to meet the Vice Chancellor of GNU, I, took, I had taken two printed copies of those two newspaper articles. And when I was there, I said, before I say anything, there are two articles. So on the articles, they, it says that the scientists from Australia has come to promote nanotechnology. But then when I started reading, he said, but first, like, half of a column was on that song. But then the other three, four columns were on nanotechnology. And because it was, and the vice chancellor, I think he was an economist. Because he was, it was published in the Indian Express and the Times of India, he could immediately see the value of nanotechnology. So being an economist, and then after he went back to my university, I got an email from Professor Boydar. He said, Dr. Bandhavadhyay, following your meeting with the vice chancellor, the vice chancellor has decided to open a nano center at JNU. And then it went through, you know, Indian University, all these authorities, and five year the five year plan still go ahead? Yes, so went through that. So, if you are in your career, you are doing everything, but also please try to pass on the information to newspapers, because people will read newspapers, okay, particularly good newspapers, and also present to people who actually have control in the government management. So, we are all, it is a part of a team, everyone is part of the same country, we have to work together. Never ever I think that we are scientists, we are scientists, we are a part of the society, it is our job or we are scientists of engineers, all right. But that was very interesting, but what I was surprised, the Times of India and, and the, from Ahmedabad, they actually published earlier the statesman and other newspapers from Calcutta had published a lot of things. Ahmedabad, they became quite interested in the nanotechnology work, but they also promoted the readers through mentioning. And in, I think in one of those two newspaper articles, they showed me a photograph of me sitting with a harmonium, okay, so playing harmonium. But India is a land of music. All right? All right. Now, going back to your question, I, I think this has answered your question. Yes? Yeah. Can you say it? Yes? yes. I, can you hear it? No. Can you say yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. And anytime you have questions, please ask. Okay. Now, going back to this, the films were The cast set petri dish was kept at room temperature. So, the, okay, the solution was cast in glass petri dish. You know this flat dish, petri dish, you are all familiar with it? Engineers, you are familiar with petri dish? Okay. It's a round, round dish. And then the bubbles were removed by shaking. And then the cast set petri dish is 
were kept at room temperature until dried. So, it was not heated anymore. And when you say room temperature, what is the standard room temperature? 25 degrees C. Okay? The films were peeled out and dried in oven afterwards at 60 degrees C and under vacuum for 6 hours. And this is the typical thickness of the film. So, these materials which you are using, they are thin films, about 50 to 75 microns. So, this other thing and P, uh, PVA is very attractive for bio, bio application and often for bio application you need to use these kinds of things. Okay? The thickness of the film was controlled by using the same amount of total materials and same size 10 centimeter diameter glass petri dish. Analytical, analytical instruments Molvan light scattering particle size analyzer was used to determine the particle size distribution. The chemical composition of fly ash and modified was done by X ray fluorescence spectroscopy. Samples were prepared as 40 millimeter glass bridges using lithium metaborate as a fluxing agent. So, these are the standard techniques, and these things are how you make samples, this is no longer on us. You take these things to the analytical center and they have their staff who actually make these samples and how they do it. Okay? Because for everything, every equipment will have its own way of how it can, you can put the samples there. But it is worthwhile looking, looking at those things. Then wide angle X-ray diffraction, spectra of fly ash were obtained. So, this is something which you have seen over the past two, three days, and then the spectra was collected over a two hour range. So, these are from 5 to 90 degree with a step size of 0 0.02 as steps. So, this is how the things were done. And then Hitachi scanning electron microscope was used to look at the morphology using the voltage 20 kilo volt and working distance z equals 50. Also, transmission electron microscope was used with a field emission gun. So, the fly ash particles were dispersed in ethanol followed by sonication. A drop of diluted suspension was poured onto copper grid which was directly injected in the sample in injection holder after air drying. Now, XPS photoelectron spectroscopy was undertaken for determination of hydroxyl concentration on fly ash and MFA surface. So, that you have hydroxyl, what is the composition of hydroxyl? OH. And do these elements or does this have similarity to a polymer? What do polymers have? Carbon, hydrogen. And, and also oxygen. So, now you have that, if you have that coating, that coating can in, interact and with the, with the, yeah, with the PVA also, all right. <coughs> now, fly ash and MFA was characterized by FTI spectroscopy, because that gives you the chemical bonding. If they have given you the, is, is there chemical bonding, all right? The tensile yield strength <coughs> were determined using Instron 1185 one with crosshead movement of 50 millimeter per minute, which means it's 2 inch per minute. So, it's not very fast, but not very slow also. And the specimens were prepared, the tensile specimens were prepared by using not D638, but because these are thin films. So, ASTM D88295 a length this ok. What I found from my experience, ASTM standards when they set up ASTM standards, the ASTM standards they do it elaborated work research and they a lot of time ok. The, when the other countries come up with their standards, often they take 
lot of things from the ASTM, and they modify some of the things. So, somehow that in my career, I asked my students to go for ASTM standards, because when I had worked with American defense establishment, because I was a defense scientist in Australia, so I had access to defense labs in America and other Canada, UK and things like that, but I worked intensively with American defense labs and I could see how, how really dedicated they are. Okay? So, ASTM standards in my opinion, it may be personal opinion, I am not going against any other country, but ASTM standards have impressed me much more than other standards. But at the same time, ASTMs also, they may not have some information which you have, so you can modify it slightly to make sure what you want, all right. Five samples were tested in each category and the average value is reported in this category. Now, this is taken from a published journal from this world, ok. This is the physical characterization. So, there are Coulter light scattering method and Molvan light scattering method. So, there are two different scattering methods. So, this one shows that this is the, if you have the volume and this is the particle diameter and the other one shows, so this is the volume and this is the particle size diameter. So, above, above 20 micron particle size, above 20 micron particle size, the volume fraction is the same. Okay, now, if I go back and ask you, so what did we think is the limited particle size diameter for flyers that, sh that could be useful in as a, as a composite reinforcement? Yes? 40, yes. So, 40 to 45. Okay? So, thank you for remembering that. So, now you can, if you go to that, so when you are coming that, that way, the information which you get, the volume person is not much different uh, between the two methods. Otherwise, if you are within 0 to like 15 or something like that, then this one is about 3 times more than the other one. But the flash particle sizes are normally or typically around 40, 45 or you can have 15, some of the flash. So, if you have 15, you are going there. So, so that will give you the distribution and it is worth mentioning. So, then other people can use as they prefer. This light scattering analyzer. This shows the, the scanning electromicrographs of flash particles to range between 1 to 10 microns. The irregular shapes and craters of the surface of flash particles are observed. So, here, this particle size, only some of them are spherical. You can have spherical, this is spherical, some spherical, but you can also have this flash particles have more irregular shape. But irregular shape often gives you a better bonding. Irregular shapes also often gives you a better bonding because what happens if the matrix cannot go into small place, all places, but at least if it's a sharp thing, this has harsh surface energy. If you have a sharp thing, it has harsh surface energy. And if you have harsh surface energy, that means it's more reactivity. So, if you have high surface energy, so it will attract the matrix and that way it will give them bond. So, spherical particles have advantages that it does not hurt the, the matrix, stress concentration will be much less, but if you, if you have particle size shape like this, provided there is good bonding, so there will be no, no stress concentration. All right? But in this system, this is how they come. The chemical composition of flash using XRF and ICP, it's analyzed by XRF, 
silica and all these things like that. So here silica is 70, about 74, 74. Alumina looks like 23 and this is 19. And so there is some differences. Here magnesium oxide and later there are not much difference. But in this case the barium oxide is not identified by XRF. Chromium oxide is not. So if you are doing analysis of the particle, just don't use one one technique because everything has the advantages and everything can act. So there may there is barium oxide, but this technique cannot identify that, whereas this technique can do that. All right, it is worthwhile using more than one technique because then at least you know what is what is one if one of the techniques cannot identify it it can it does not this xrf does not identify these two and this this one what is strontium is that strontium 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 okay what does it do strontium oxide chemists any idea is it is it high molecular weight strontium Yes, yes, you are saying something? Strontium oxide? It's extra substrate. Okay. Can you speak loudly? It acts as a substrate. Okay. So it, if you add bins, it's good. It provides some, some extra benefit. But uh, thank you for that. But at least in by using this one, you can see that yes, it has strontium, very small percentage, 0.02. But it's not that bad. 0.02 is 0.02 percentage means 0 0.0002 gram. If you have one gram, there is 0 0.0002. Now LOI. This is interesting. What is LOI? What does it represent? What element mostly? Carbon. Thank you. Now this is interesting. If you do by XRF, it will show you 0.31. But if you go by ICP AS, it shows you about more than three times. All right. So, so this is what it does. So do not take only one thing for for being the granted one. So keep it in mind. But you might then take an advantage, make an average of between these two. But this is where no one has any control because different different characterization methods are different advantages and so that one may have more chemical analysis and this is more extra what is the what is the law that governs what is the equation for x-ray detection n lambda equals 2 d sin theta that means basically how it gets reflected if it comes how the wave comes and gets reflected the Sine theta is the is the thing. Lambda is the wavelength, two D sine theta. D is the distance between the planes. Okay, so it's not chemical. It is what is it? it's not chemical. It's how can I define it? We know it's not chemical. It's diffract diffraction type, diffraction type. Whereas this one has more chemical aspect. So why? Are, it was done because, as I said, Dr. Dilip Devnath, he had, he comes from a chemistry aspect and he did his PhD in Japan and he was very, he, he was very difficult to change and I didn't want to change. I was to say that, yes, do it because I also wanted to see and it was very good that he combined these two techniques and that opens up the eyes. This gives you more of the chemical nature. And chemical nature means we'll see FTIR and other things. They show bonding and they show peaks and things like that. So it is much useful if you, when you are doing research, you go and see in your university who have different facilities and please get a full, much better characterization.
mineralogical characterization of fly ash and this shows the XRD wide angle X-ray diffraction. What is the difference between wide angle X-ray diffraction and small angle X-ray diffraction? Are you familiar with small angle X-ray diffraction? Small angle X-ray diffraction it, hmm? yes, yes, it's, you start between 0 to about 5 degree or something like that. Whereas, here you can go up to 45 up to close to 90 degree, but there you go there. And that can also give you some more information about the amorphous natures and things like that. Okay. Now, I did not know anything about that small because my PhD on polyethylene, my supervisor who came from UK and he used to work in ICI International, what Imperial Chemical Industries and ICI. And he he showed me when I did my metallurgy course, we did not know about small angle X-ray scattering. We knew normal wide angle X-ray scattering. But then he said, band of polymers and things like that, also please go for. So I did that and I, I learned a lot. And then I can see the advantage of, so you look at a very small angle, so you can see much the finer aspects of the material. So this is wide angle X-ray scattering. And it shows that fly ash is mainly the hexagonal quartz, silicon oxide, silicon dioxide. So, these are actually the peaks which represent different things. These results agree with QEM scan analysis of fly ash also, which shows predominantly about 70 percent aluminum silicate malite and 10 percent silicate. Yesterday, we went through some malite. Now, formation of malite actually happens in the process of thermal decomposition of the mineral component kaolinite. So, what means is that malite is not an ingredient on the sources of fly ash coal. So, when coal is heated, you generate fly ash, okay. then that also gives that high temperature chemical changes, chemical reaction between the components of coal. So, this is a new product which comes when you burn coal. Now, recently in one of uh, my latest PhD scholars work, this fly ash composites actually showed evidence of malite. Okay. Some of them showed and some of them, some samples showed evidence of malite, some samples did not show evidence of malite. But evidence of, evidence of malite seem to have a good effect on the dielectric properties of the fly ash. So, as we can see from here, people might say that why does fly, why, how do you have malite? Because analysis of coal shows that there is no malite in the thing. So, you have to be ready to answer that question from here, that malite actually it forms when coal is burnt to generate energy and fly ash. Okay? Where there is huge amount huge amount of energy, thermal energy is there. So, that is how it forms this kaolinite. Static mechanical properties of P fly ash PVA composites. So, here because PVA is very thin film, the cracks and Gnosis and defects are much less there. Films have much lesser cracks. And as you can see here, mechanical properties of the PVA fly ash composite, 10 films. With zero fly ash, tensile strength about 29 tensile strength. But when you go to 15 percent fly ash, the tensile strength has gone up to about close to 80 percent. And then, then it did not change much with 25 it is about 88. So, compared to polypropylene in the case of in the case of PVA, compared to the polypropylene in the case of PVA, the strength goes up very high with addition of fly ash just about 25 percent. And these are the stress strain diagrams. So, there are three here and 
see there. So, there are total 6. So, some of them have a high strain. The without flyers, the strain is 200 more than 200 percent, and then even with 25 percent flyers, this strain is still 42 percent. So, this is this will not break even if you use for bio, bio applications, this composites will not break, it stretch, stretch, but it will not crack. Yes, yes. Now, the, this researcher asked, it shows the elastic nature, okay. it shows elastic and beyond elastic plastic nature also, because it goes up to here. Up to here, this is elastic, and there, in, in these situations, so if you, if you have here, these are things, and then these are much more plastic. Beyond the yielding, it's much more plastic here. Can you see that? Okay. Let me see it. Tensile strength, stress versus strain. If you do it there, the function of time, then you have to do, you have to hold it for some, hold it for some time, okay? Or you have to do it at a very slow rate. Like here, it's done at a twenty. 20 millimeter per minute, but if you are using different, so this has given a standard stress standard. Now, I'll think about your thing and I'll come back with an answer. All right. If you have a question, always ask. Okay. What it shows? The addition of flyers to need PVA. Okay. There are two sets. I think need PVA. Enhance the tensile strength proportionally and dramatic increase observed at 15 percent. So, the dramatic thing is this is about 15 percent. So, the increase is very high at, at that one. Now, if you add 15, 25 percent of flyers, it gives a very slow subsequent increase. So, you get the increase quickly, but later on, the increase is not that much. Here, it goes from here and it's Slow. But it's, it shows ductility. Here it shows tensile strength, but ductility is also very important. Sometimes people don't worry about ductility, but in bio, bio application, what is ductility? When you are walking like that, there is huge amount of deformation. Okay? So, you have to walking after a long time. How do you get rid of the stress? You sit down and put it things there. So, there is stress relaxation, but if there is fracture of anything, then you have to go and see a surgeon. But before the fracture, make sure you sit down and take rest. So, the strain which has gone up to there, it will start coming back. Now, even if it does not do much better, so put some warm water in a bucket and sit down on a tool and put your feet in the bucket. But keep on sh shaking it so that there is air in the thing. And then afterwards, th there will be stress relaxation. So, the good thing here in these attempts are that the strain to failure is much higher. This is about 200, 200 percent. That means what is 200 percent? So, if the length, if did anyone ask question? No. If the, if the length of the film is 50 millimeter, it will go up to 100 years. It, 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 will, it will go up to 100, so that is 50 times, so that is 100 percent. And then it will go even further, all right, so by another, so 150, so from 50 to 150 it will go. But it will not crack. Elongation will be there, and when elongation happens, there is also some orientation and things, the material, it can become a bit stiffer on things, but then let it relax and that is known as, and then it will come down. So, this is particularly very, in biopolymers, 
whatever you are doing, you are working at home or you are doing computer, if you are doing computer, your fingers is there. And my doctor tells me, do so, we are doing too much computer, do some exercise, do it with heavy, heavy things and things, it will give you muscles. But I don't have much time. And I said, computers are not heavy. If I leave the computer, they are not very heavy. I said, bad, no, you are a rubbish, rubbish patient. I don't want to see you. I said, thank you, doctor. I would love to come and see you anymore. Okay? But my doctor, he, is, he never likes to give medication. He said, let your body fight for anything and get rid of the problem. And that's what composites can do. Even in a structure, even in a structure, the, if the stress and strain actually affects the matrix and the interface and the bond, the composite and the reinforcement can help it relaxing. Okay? So, composites, when we talk about composites, I can become a medical doctor for the composites structures, then they don't have to do anything, work within limits and you will get relaxed. <laughs> Stress and strain. Okay. So, when heavy, on, on a bridge, when heavy vehicles are going during the whole day, there will be a lot of stress, but when the vehicles are not traveling, they after 7 or 8 p.m. To in the morning, about 10, 12 hours, it will start to relax. Okay? So, that is how things happen. Now, suggested model, so why you see all these things? PVA possesses a highly polar matrix containing OH groups in addition to acetyl groups. It also depends on the degree of hydrolyzation that occurs. The normal 89 percent hydrolyzed PVA contains two major functional groups, OH and COOCH3. It's important to note that the functional OH or ion generally covers the surface of metal and metal, metalloid oxides. So, this plays a significant role in the formation of physical bonding between the surfaces of substrates and OH bonds present in the fully hydroxylated things. So, and also remembering that fly ash has about 74 percent silica. So, this comes and silica is also attracted to OH. So, those things they have and because they are in small particles so they have their nice chemical bonding. In the presence of fly ash, the existence of OH groups on the particle surface may take part in the formation of hydrogen bonding between the PVA chain. So, all these things happen and you remember when above 20 percent fly ash concentration and above the strain, the maximum stoichiometric level of hydrogen bonding have been attended between the flyer surface and the PVS chains. So, that is how all these properties changes. Do you want to take a break? Five minutes break? Coming of coal particles before burning into the air. So, how it can be prevented? So, my common sense is that where the coal particle is coming through out, put a sieve which will, which has holes much smaller than the coal particle size. So, it will not allow the coal particle go out into, into the air and it can fall and get stored there and then you can subsequently burn that and generate flyers there. But I can see that they actually if you have coal particles it can use health issues and things like that here. But do not allow the coal particles come into the air. Use sieves. You, are, you know what I mean by sieve? Chalni je bolta hai? Filters. Yes. The particles which are bigger than the size of those things, it is not allowed to go out. So, it will come down. So, you have to have actually and then when it comes down, you remove it. You have a remover there and take it as particle size. So, or, Yes, yes you, 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 in a small thing. Or you can even sell 
that those coal particles as something else people can actually use it for burning it can be a new source of instead of gas because we out of gas and things like that you can make them into blocks of coal you can give, give a bit of thing particles so that they can become small blocks and then good idea this this is how commercial things come up i like your question and thank you everyone thank you for your comment also this figure you i had shown in another slide before showing that how if you have fly ash as this silicon oxide and polymer has this carbon and hydrogen and also in some case oxygen so that shows that the bonding between pba and fly ash based on this tensor so here they say that in the case of pva the same thing happens but whereas in the case of polypropylene this strength goes down but in the case of pva this strength goes up when you are adding fly ash now the strength at break is decreasing while modulus are increasing exponentially with with the addition of fly ash okay let's take a look at this strain percentage and modulus with a function of the fly ash this is this this is the strain so as so without fly ash is 250 that means it can 250% if you are stretching it and with fly ash 25% fly ash is coming down to about 50% it is still quite high 50% is still quite high whereas the modulus of elasticity it goes up from about 100 to about close to 350 or even with 20% it goes up to about 300 so what this work shows that these films with fly ash can make it much stiffer stiffer and also retain the ductility okay then people can use dynamic mechanical properties which is storage modulus loss modulus and tan delta so these are standard procedures for polymers for metals you seldom talk about loss modulus okay but polymers have storage modulus and loss modulus means with under stress and after some time the modulus can go down that means the intensity to flow or deform becomes more so that is what storage and loss modulus and what is tan delta tan delta shows how it goes and tan delta series of tan delta you can get it and one of them indicates the glass transition temperature that means below that below that the material will not deform all right polymers show a lot of glass transition temperature ceramics have at room temperature is always brittle even up to 500 600 700 700 so for ceramics they don't bother about glass transition temperature unless you are going into nuclear power plant and things like that where you are heating to about 1200 1400 degrees c and things like that again i had a background for one year in bsc training school so that at least gave me some idea about nuclear energy and then when I, when i went to university of new south wales there is uh anstro australian nuclear science technology organization and i used to work with some of the people so i had seen that so nuclear nuclear materials or nuclear technology you you can actually have to think about it can it needs even ceramics can become soft okay when you have silicon oxide or other silicon carbide goes to 14 and 12 and 14 and then you think is it ductile or is it soft normally at room temperature we never think about it but any material can be used in different at different temperature regimes okay the next few slides where it says e prime the storage modulus and loss modulus increase dramatically by addition of 5 to 25% fly ash over the value of need PBA. So let's have a quick look at that. So this is zero five twenty-five. This is storage modulus goes up. 
this is loss modulus also goes up. That means loss modulus does not come down. So, if you put fly ash in it in the PVA, it becomes stronger and stiffer. And the tangent is actually the loss modulus divided by the storage modulus, and that is how it goes. The magnitudes of E prime and e, e double prime are increased in films with fly ash additions. So, please note that this is talking about the films and the tangent delta well, of neat PV and composites increase with function of temperature. Now, what has done is use temperature because you are now not working at room temperature only, but you are going 50 degrees C, 100, 150, 200 degrees C. And there it is shown, shown that with the tangent, which is the loss modulus divided by storage modulus, that goes up. And after that, beyond that temperature, is, it starts coming down. So, this gives you the indication of glass transition temperature and also the material starts becoming softer and softer like that. But at body, 75 degrees centigrade is quite safe if you are doing it for, but also at the same time you can use these films not only for bio applications, but you can use it for other applications. Maybe in uh, computers, maybe you can use it in your other features and your mobiles and things like that, the plastics they can use it because it is quite detains quite high strength. For neat PVA, this glass transition temperature is approximately 73 degrees centigrade and for the composite, the value is increased by about 5 to 10 degrees centigrade. So, the fly ash still makes it a bit cheaper. As we said earlier, what are the most popular composites? Answer was polypropylene, polyester, epoxy, but now as we have seen, Petroleum based polypropylene makes a very popular thermoplastic polymer, and the, but the PPF5 composites are poor in tension, so now we can add PVA in the list of fly ash reinforced composites. So these are the IR spectra, and they show actually for neat PVA, one is neat PVA. And the other one is 20 percent PVA. So, they are very similar, very close. Only slight difference here and there. So, there is not much difference. So, the 20 percent flash, so the yes, 20 percent flash in the neat PVA and its composites is about the same. The, that means the, there is some bonding and then if you look at this table from the graphs, these are all the peak positions. So they are they are not much different. Three to nine eight, three to six three. These are wavelength or inverse of wavelength. That's how this FTR is done. But you will see all these things. The values are quite the same. This peak OH, CH, stretch or bend, C double O all these things are the same. So, this is what shows that at least the bonds are quite retained and this is what you have seen before. This is the reason the hydrogen bonding partially anchors the high modulus for fly ash particles. That is what is the phenomenon which is providing the more bonding. These are the PVA and fly ash composites. On the left hand side, this is sorry. On the left hand side, this is 10 percent fly ash, 20 percent fly ash, and 25 percent fly ash. Now, can you see that there again there is bonding in the 10 percent fly ash, there is much less bonding, but at 25, 20 percent fly ash, there is bonding and there is continuation of the thing. Can you see that? And so, there is less stress concentration, the strength is going up and modulus is going up. With 25 percent flash, it looks, it looks a, even much better. So, it is like continuous, all right. So, this is, you have a question? No, thank you. 
So, SEM is always very useful at good magnification and here again all the scale bars are 10 microns. So, this shows that this is 10 percent fly ash which has some warning, but when you go to 20 or 25 percent fly ash, it becomes almost like a homogeneous material, at least from outside, from stress point of view. So, there is no stress concentration. Homogeneous materials do not have much stress concentration unless there is void, but if they are heterogeneous materials, they can have stress concentration, but here it shows that PVA is polyvinyl alcohol is, is very useful, all right. And because polyvinyl alcohol can also be used in human body and biomedical applications. So, and the flash particles are covered by the by the polymer. So, at least it makes that composite much better, stronger and stiffer and it will not crack. So, ACM macrographs clearly indicate weighting and int intimate bonding and bridging of fiber, fiber cut particles. So, this is how is a summary of all this. The maximum stake to attend with the addition of 20 percent fly ash. The storage and the storage and loss modulus of the composite materials display similar increasing trend with addition of fly ash with function of temperature and we have one have to remember up to 75 degrees centigrade the properties went up and after that it started coming down. Induction of covalent bonds between the acetyl ring and other linkage were observed in FTR. So, that gives you a chemical that gives you a chemical thing and I am pleased to say that I think Kanpur in India was one of the primary institutions to actually have the first FTIR facilities there. So, that makes IIT Kanpur very good and now there is lot more this very advantage, advanced systems of IR and FTIR and ACM macrographs clearly indicate weighting and intimate bonding and bridging of flyers particles with the previous matrix thereby supporting how the strength and the modulus of elasticity is going up. All right, so that ends this chapter. Professor Kohn, can you go to the next? And it's good to see that Professor Kerr is here because I hope he has heard my last few comments. So, flyers, PVA flyers can be used in a biomed biomedical application with proper covering of the flyers by the PVA. Radhaji, when Kishanji was playing holy with all these gopis and gopinis, Radhaji was saying, Are, ab kya kana hai? Hum ko saas holy nahi khel raha hai so, ye gana aya. Madhuban me shyama bihari khele huri Gopiyo ke beech Sri Radhika sang Lila kari Sri Hari Madhuban me shyama bihari khele huri Abira gulala ranga me rangala Chale ghana shyam, hotho pe haasala, radha mana gila, machala machala, suni ke madhura bansari, madhuban me shyam abhihari khele huri. Gawe braja bala, gopi nari sabha, haguna ke jaya gaan. Sunata hilula, jamuna jala, bajata kalatan. Roe Sri Radha, priya parashan mange, shyam ke man me, suvanu bhau jage, khud me liye, Radha ko samaye, yugala mila na uchali, madhuban me, Shyama Bihari Khele Huri Gopiyo Ke Beech Sri Radhika Sang Lila Kare Sri Hari Madhuban Me Shyama Bihari Khele Huri Madhuban Me Madhuban Me 
मधुबन में मधुबन में Shall we go and have a cup of tea? Yes, Professor Kaur says. Thank you, Professor Kaur.